Hey guys, welcome back to Malcolm VA. Today I'm going to show you how to install a contour fan into a Fox Body Mustang. Well, pretty much any Mustang with a similar size radiator. Some small parts of it are Fox Body specific. These are super popular because these fans are really powerful and they have an integrated shroud, which makes a huge difference in how it cools the car. Previously, we did this install in our 92 Fox and it was a huge success. We did it all DIY, made our own brackets, harness, everything, and that worked for amazing. Now, since then, I've had a lot of questions about, well, how does that compare to like the LMR kit where you can buy pre-made brackets and, and such and bolt it in? I never really had an answer. And we had another project come up now where we needed another one of these fans and our supercharger AC build, if you've been following along the series on the channel, and it needs some cooling help. So I decided, you know what, this is a great opportunity. We went ahead and grabbed the LMR kit. We got their brackets, it's actually two symmetrical brackets. And we're gonna go ahead and test out their kit and put it in and see how it works. It was kind of nice, it came with some hardware, uh, the electrical connectors, which we previously sourced ourselves off of Amazon, and it came with some hose. The hose is, you know, it's really hard rubber, not a huge fan. If you've been watching the series, you know I always change that out for silicon, and no exceptions here. I'm swapping it out for some nice, flexible, easy to use silicon. And we do need to change the degas bottle out. We got this real compact little one with this new fan setup. You can't use the stock Fox degas bottle. It's kind of huge and uh, doesn't fit anymore. So let's jump right into this. First thing we're going to do on here, we need to get rid of these tabs. There's two of them on each side, so we got four tabs: two here, two on the bottom, and then one on the top. They interfere with our fitment, so we're gonna cut those off, grind them down smooth, and then proceed to fitting it to the radiator. And for today, we also went ahead and grabbed, it's a neoprene rubber. It's pretty dense, heavy, nice rubber. We're gonna use this to try and build something along the sides of the radiator to shield it, so that air's not blowing past the radiator and escaping in. Now, you don't have to pull the radiator out of the car to do this job, but we went ahead and pulled it out just to make it easier to show you what's going on. So you can see here, it's actually a pretty heavy core, radiator we got from LMR, nice and thick, so that's good capacity there. But our fan setup is what's what's hurting us here. It's a 16 inch spool fan, which is a decent good fan, but it really doesn't make use of the stock shroud. See how it's got huge spacing around here? I mean, it kind of helps. It worked really well when the car was in a, but now with AC and the blower on there, just normal driving, we're getting up to about 220 real quick. It's just not getting the natural airflow through it that it used to. It really needs a fan to be pulling it through, hence this contour fan setup. So we're gonna change all this out and come up with something a little better. Also, you can see how huge this factory degas bottle is. And with the new fan set up and shroud going all the way over, there's no way it's gonna fit. So that's gonna go. Tabs are all cut off and smoothed down. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and address this resistor block. You really don't have to do anything with it. I just don't like having this big chunky thing in here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the two screws, pull the unit out, disassemble it, and put back just the plate that covers the hole and get rid of this whole conglomeration. While I have the fan out here, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna run the wiring before we attach it to the radiator. I already have this little pigtail on here. I've got another one right here that's gonna go on here. You're gonna to wanna, to, first thing you wanna do is make sure you got your polarity correct. So for me, I went ahead and tested this left one over here is positive, that side is negative. This wire is got a blue stripe, that one has a white stripe. But your wire colors could change as supplier parts change, so just always test that. And in my case, this fan did not come from LMR. This was a really cheap $70 one on eBay, works really good. I don't know, I would think they're all the same, but it's worth noting if you buy your fan from LMR, double check polarity. So I'm gonna attach a wire harness here. I'm gonna build it along, run it under here and around to the center point. I'll likely drill a hole and secure it right there so nothing's flapping around under here. Curl around, tap into this one, and then come off to a GM weather pack connector, just like I did on the old fan. I'm just gonna replicate that, and it'll plug right into the car where I already have a matching one on the other side. Okay, now let's test fit the fan on here. Oh yes, look at that. Beautiful, that's why it's so popular. See how it fits so nice and tight in there covers the bulk of the radiator with the shroud and fairly compact package. Okay, next step is we're gonna go ahead and attach our brackets, those LMR ones, to the fan and then we're gonna attach it onto the radiator. So here's what's happening. 
The top bracket is installed, no problems. The way it works is you put a bolt through with a nut, which creates like a pedestal. You then slide the bracket onto it and put a second nut on, and that attaches it. Worked out great. The bottom, however, not so great. On this side, none of the holes lined up with the bracket, so I had to drill a new hole over here to line up with the bracket to make that fit. Not a big deal. Got that going. However, even after I put that on, I dropped it down on there, I'm noticing a large gap on the bottom here between the bracket itself and the fan as it's sitting on there. In closer inspection, I can see what's happening is right here, it's catching over here. This bump, there's no clearance in the bracket for that. Now, I could just cut this fan piece out, but that will create a hole where we lose suction on the radiator because we'll just be drawing air in here. Not much, but you want to seal as much as possible. So what we're going to do is clearance the bracket instead and put a little arch over the top so that it can straddle that and we should hopefully get a seal down on there. I also think I have to remove the nut pedestal on this side because it was pedestaled up so high I had a big gap over here as well. All right, this is fitting in here pretty good now. I'm not seeing any more gaps, looks pretty good. Got this little clearance I did here so it could sit down. I also had to grind out this corner here because of the radius in here. It was making it sit up like that. Now it can actually sink down and kind of fits in here. So I think we're in good shape. All right, we got our coolant overflow bottle next. It's a little bit different than how I did it on the 92 Fox where I made my own brackets and such. You can check out that video to see how I did it. But this way it looks like it'll work just fine. So the yellow MR bracket gives you a 90 bracket that you put on here and bolt it like that. And then on this side, there's no place for a 90, so they give you a straight little bracket that you're gonna put across there, just like that. And you'll drill a little hole in the side here and fasten it up. All right, there we have it. All attached on here. Seems pretty good, a little bit different. On the other kit that I did, we used a silver shiny one. The lid actually tarnished pretty bad and never did come right, so decided to try black this time. We'll see how this finish holds up. Not too bad. All right, we're now ready to drop the fan assembly on here. The bottom is gonna slide into these little hooks down here and the top will come down and the bolts will go in there and fasten it over there. So I've been trial fitting this in the car and making adjustments, taking it in and out. And one of the biggest downsides I'm seeing here to these LMR brackets is clearance. These brackets do not pull this whole assembly down flush on the radiator. This, you see how there's flex and play, it can go down further. There's kind of a gap all the way around. It's just the design. I've been disassembling it, grinding down the corners, bending the brackets, playing with the nut and bolt spacers, trying to get the maximum clearance I can. Because if you have a supercharger that sits right here and the belt goes by, you know, every millimeter of clearance counts. And these brackets are just not cutting it. Uh, the, the whole idea of these brackets should be to save time. And honestly, I've spent like the better part of the day making adjustments, grinding, tweaking. If you go look at my other video where I made my own brackets on the 92, this whole plastic assembly sits completely flush, pulled down on the radiator all the way around and gives you maximum clearance. Uh, obviously, if you're an NA car and you don't have a blower, it's not too concerning. But if you've got a blower, I would think twice about uh, you know, how you're going to make clearance work on this setup. Now, when I say things are tight, I'm talking so tight that as this assembly is sliding in the car and the blower belt is going by, it doesn't even clear this electrical connector. I have to remove this electrical connector to get the belt by, and once it's sitting down in place, I can then squeeze this connector in and the belt comes right by it. We're talking like millimeters of clearance. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep finagling around with this and trying to get the best possible outcome because I don't want any rubbing as we get to driving, of course. Busy building the wire harness. Got it coming down. Nice heavy crimped connections here to some uh, I believe it's 12 gauge wire, matches this wire over here. Got some heat shrink on there, nice and good. Comes along here, of course here we have a connection where you've got these wires coming in and the wires going there. So you have dual connectors in here. I had to use a much heavier, larger type crimp over here. The standard crimping tool couldn't do it. I uh, had to get out the uh, hydraulic one. Gives you a lot more force to crimp larger connection and wires like that. Still gotta put the heat shrink on and neaten up the wires, tuck it up. We'll eventually put this corrugated stuff on, wire wrap to make it look nice when we're all done. And then on the outer end here, we'll go ahead and get our weather pack connector on here and be ready to plug into the car. All right, there it is, all done. We got the electrical made, the whole harness is attached and pinched down on here. 
Got the electrical connector here. I'll talk more a little bit later about how this goes into the car and how that works. Overflow tank, of course, it's got the silicon hose on here, all attached, ready to go. So let's go drop this in. There it is, drop down. You can really see what I mean by clearance issues here. You can't even see all the way through because there's overlapping under the belt, these parts that stick out through there. Overall, it looks really nice though. I just wish these LMR brackets pulled it in a little bit better. You can see there's some gaps here. It's just the way it fits. And I made lots of adjustments to really tuck it as much as I can, but it's not as tucked up against that radiator as you know if you made your own brackets and you could pull it all the way up. And that makes it really tight down there. Let me see if I can get in there. You can see the electrical overlaps the belt. Look at that, it's so tight. <laughs> we can see if we can make this work. All right, we pulled the radiator assembly back out and we're gonna go ahead and install this rubber. It's actually a neoprene rubber. And we're gonna put strips down the side here, um, along the side of the radiator. And the idea is to stop all this air that just blows by on both sides. Cause you have all this air pressure coming in when you're driving. And from the factory, there's normally some kind of plastic that seals it. So we're gonna build our own to accommodate with this radiator and that'll help force more air through the cores and, and you know, reduce blow by on the sides. Here's what we came up with. Actually looks fairly factory. Got the push pins up on the top there. Got this piece here where it flexes out for the uh, frame rail where it passes through. And down on the bottom side, we just drilled a couple holes and we're likely gonna zip tie that because we have a tubular radiator bar down there. Didn't really wanna put holes in it just yet. I uh, don't know, you know, don't want it filling up with water or anything weird. If the zip tie method doesn't work, we'll uh, reevaluate and maybe make some holes in it. But for now, I think we're gonna give this a shot. So about the electrical, on this car, we're driving the uh, fans with a Ford Fusion fan speed controller. Uh, which is driven by some other modules that I've built. I actually have several other videos on the various controllers I've built. I've made Arduino-based ones. Uh, I've driven them with the MS3 computers, the Mega Squirt stuff. I've used um, the Micro Squirt or MS2-based, which interfaces with a Arduino through CAN bus, and then it in turn drives the Ford, fa Ford Fusion fan controller, <laughs> uh, which is what this car is doing. And you know, I can, you guys can look at some of the other videos, the techie guys that like computers and electronics and want to do all that kind of fancy stuff. I know that's not for everyone. Some of you are like, you know what? I put an electric fan on, I just want the fan to turn on and off. Nothing more. So here's how we're gonna go about that. There's, there's a couple ways. You could get a temperature probe that they sell. You jam into the fins of the radiator and then it's got a dial and you can kind of set a trip point on and off. Uh, I highly advise not using those. They have very, very poor performance and reliability. And they're not very sensitive to the temperature changes either because they're greatly affected by the ambient air around the radiator. So it's a 90 degree day, you, you pop that thing into your radiator fins, you turn the dials, and you get it kind of kicking and cycling the fan on and off roughly where you want. Bear in mind, they're not super consistent. If you've got an accurate temperature gauge, you're gonna see the kick on and kick off have some fluctuation in itself. Then what happens is, it's a 60 degree day. You're driving along, and that cooler ambient air is cooling down that probe in the, in the fins, and the, rate, the fans don't turn on when you expect them to and it'll get hotter, 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 and I almost lost a motor playing with one of these years ago. It's, it's not worth it. You then have to read the, turn the dials, get it adjusted for that 60 degree day. Then it's a 90 degree day, and now the fan just runs continuously because of the, the new adjustments. So greatly avoid that. What you want is an actual coolant temperature sensor. I actually have one right here. that looks something like this. You can buy these at Summit Racing or similar places. This is essentially just an on-off switch. They sell them at different coolant temperatures like 175, 180, 195, pick one for your application. And what's really nice is you just wire your relay to this guy and when the temperature hits a certain coolant point, it snaps on the uh, relay and your fans run. When it cools down it's below a certain threshold, this thing turns off, turns the relay off, the fans turn off. Really simple, use key on power to the relay and you're all set. So where do you put this guy? Well, you could find a spot like in your intake manifold or so forth. I find a much better way is I took a piece of pipe like this and I welded it a 3 8 bong. This happens to be a 3 8 pipe thread sensor in there. Threads right in and this goes right into your coolant flow. So I have, you know, I intercepted a radiator hose like that. And now the sensor is buried in the coolant. Ambient temperatures are no longer an issue because it doesn't matter if it's 30 degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. This only reads the temperature of the coolant because it's buried in the coolant. That's the way to go. Should you put this in the upper or the lower radiator hose? That's a good question because it makes quite a difference. Lower radiator hose is where you want it. And the reason is the coolant coming out of the engine into the upper radiator hose 
is always hot. Obviously, it's just coming out of the engine. So your fan runs continuously or at least a lot more than it should. But if you move this to the lower radiator hose, the radiator at least gets to do its job first before the coolant hits this temperature sensor. So that way, if you're on a highway and you've got good airflow, or maybe the ambient temps are cooler at, the radiator is doing its job, it's pulling the temps way down, your fan hardly runs at all. It doesn't need to. So that's a great way to go. I also welded on a, um, a stud with a nut and I put a ground cable on here. That way you don't have electrical currents kind of running through your coolant causing electrolysis. It can wear down uh, or corrode heater cores, radiators, things like that. So just be mindful of that. Run a ground cable, ground it to a good chassis ground, somewhere like that. And that way electricity is flowing through your switch at your ground cable and not grinding itself through the coolant in your engine block. So there you go. That should make turning a fan on and off pretty simple and reliable. So I hope that was helpful. About to go test this fan out now. Hopefully the car stays nice and cool. All right, we are driving testing these contour fans. We've actually been driving for several weeks with them, so we have quite a bit of data on them. And they're nothing shy of impressive. You know, this car was running in low 200s initially, and when you'd have AC cranked on full power, it would climb 220, 230, 240, until we turned the AC off, it, you know, it'd creep up and it couldn't handle it. Now with AC on max, the blower motor on max, um, it holds like 180 degrees. It doesn't budge. It's real impressive. Uh, we got our little digital gauges down here in the dash and keeping an eye on it. And it's data logging so we can review things later. Um, super impressed with these contour fans. Uh, highly, highly recommend. Uh, we haven't had any issues other than some power issues. We can definitely tell the alternator is heavily taxed. Uh, the voltages are pulling way down. We're seeing like 10 volts, 9 volts, whatever at times at idle you know, with everything on full power. Uh, we got to get the alternator upgraded ASAP. That's going to burn out the alternator, all the wiring. So that's, uh, that's a good side note for doing these contour fan upgrades. You are going to need an, an alternator upgrade. So we're going to tackle that next time. I know most guys shoot for a 3G alternator. It's super popular. We have a way better option, a lot more amps, a lot more powerful and bolt-in solution without all the uh, issues associated with a 3G with grinding up and cutting brackets and so forth to get them to fit because of their biggest size. So there it is, guys. Highly recommended. Awesome cooling. Uh, we'll see you next time. Be kind to one another.